So when you check the lepton number, because it's muon, electron, muon neutrino, and X is there. So for lepton number for every lepton, it's one, and for anti lepton, it is. minus one. So here lepton number one, one. This also for lepton one. So you can see this element, this particle X is there. So what should be the lepton number of this element, this particle so that it should be conserved? On the left hand side, you're getting one. On the right hand side, you're getting two lepton number. So what should be the lepton number of this? So lepton number should be minus one. So this particle should have a charge zero, baryon number zero, lepton number minus one. So which particle can be here, which follow this all properties, uh, anti electron neutrino is having all these properties that it should have a lepton number minus one. And uh, the charge should be zero, the baryon number should be zero. So this particle, which is released here, is actually anti-electron neutrino. Is it clear, this example? Yeah. Now, what are the fundamental forces? There are four fundamental forces, which are gravitational, electromagnetic, strong nuclear, and weak nuclear. These are the fundamental forces. Means if you are discussing any force, that will be one of this type. Strong nuclear or weak nuclear. So these are the basic or the fundamental forces. Now, what is the origin of these forces and how these forces interact or they exist? First about the gravitational force. Why the gravitational, what is the unit for the gravitational or origin of a gravitational force? Anything which is having a mass will have a gravitational force stronger or weaker depending on its mass but if anything is having a mass it will always have a gravitational force like for example even your pen or a pencil is having a gravity your table is also having a gravity so these objects are attracting each other but why you don't feel a movement like a table move toward the pen because the, their mass is comparatively small as compared to like planets, so they have a higher gravity, so their interaction or their effect of the gravity is visible. But anything which is having a mass will have a force between them and that's a gravitational force. And it is always attractive. The gravitational force can never be repulsive. Whenever two objects are there, the gravitational force will always be attractive force. And gravitational force cannot be shield. Like what does it mean? Say you have uh, two objects which are separated. They have a gravitational force between them and they are separated by a distance of two meter. And example, this object was experiencing a gravitational force of 100 Newton. So if I place an object between them, another mass, the value of the gravitational force which is experienced by this object, A, will not change. So means the gravitational force cannot be shielded. Even I have many particles between them, but every time it will experience a 100 Newton force. So gravitational force 
it's because of the mass it is always attractive and its range is infinite like you cannot specify it is acting for a short range or long it is acting for infinite range and gravitational can be ignored in terms of atomic scale because the mass is very small like small particles you can neglect the gravitational force so why you can neglect the gravitational force because their mass is so like there is up quark and there is a down quark so i can neglect the gravitational force between them why because their mass is negligible or very small mass same way we have electromagnetic force the second kind of force the force which act between the charge object whenever the object is having a charge but this force can be attractive it can be repulsive gravitational is always attractive but electromagnetic can be attractive or it can be repulsive and it is also having an infinite range and this force can be shielded like example if you have uh, two charges are place up uh, two positive charges or positive and negative charges so if i place another charge here then the force which was originally experienced by the charges will change but in case of gravitational the force cannot be shielded then we have a nuclear force or a weak nuclear force which act on all particles both lepton and quarks quark experience weak but leptons its effect is more visible and it has a range of 10 exponent minus 17 of a meter and this force is involved for a beta decay same way we have a strong nuclear force which exists between hadrons hadrons are actually mesons and baryons and it is a very short range which act within the nucleus so these are the fundamental forces whenever the particles are interacting or whenever objects interact the there if there is a force the force can be any one of this type it can be gravitational electromagnetic weak nuclear or strong nuclear maybe they may have more than two forces or they may have two forces or more than two like example this is an atom the nucleus of an atom and it consists of a proton for example two protons are there so proton consists of up up and up down down and here also up down down proton is having a mass so if it's having a mass it will have a gravitational force they also have a charge so they will have electromagnetic force they are also quarks so they have and they are within the nucleus or short range so they also have a strong nuclear force so three of the forces can exist here at the same time which force is stronger than the other there is a way to calculate but all these forces can exist at the same time if it's a strong nuclear then it it is within the nucleus it's a short range responsible for holding the particles within the nucleus but a strong nuclear a strong nuclear force it's like a spring holding the two masses so it can be attractive it can be repulsive how for like example if you have two masses and you attach with a string or a spring sorry and if i pull this spring what will happen if i try to pull this spring these masses will come towards the center but if i try to compress the spring these masses will go away from the center so means it can be attractive it can be repulsive so strong nuclear force when the particles are coming closer to each other it is repulsive when the particles are going away from each other it is attractive is it clear this interaction so 
then how the particle interact with each other actually particle exchange bosons how they apply a force like example how are two masses are applying force so they are exchanging a particle we call that as boson so example sun is attracting the earth the gravitational force is there earth is attracting the sun as well because of gravitational force so how they are interacting with each other so they are exchanging a particle with each other and this particle is called boson if the boson is due to gravitational force what we call we call that as graviton this boson is known as graviton but practical evidence it is only theoretical particle till now there is no practical experimental evidence to show that graviton exist is just a theory till now but if charges are interacting like example if there is a po two positive charges or one positive and one negative so they will attract each other they will apply force on each other so how they apply force on each other so they exchange a particle and that particle is a photon so if positive particle transfer that photon and negative particle transfer that photon to positive so they are exchanging a particle it's this particle is actually you can understand like it's how they are interacting with each other by exchanging information or the particle and that particle is a photon for electromagnetic force for a weak nuclear it can be w and z bosons or w plus w minus so three particles and for a strong nuclear the particle which are holding these particles are called gluon like for example up quark and there is up quark so because these are quarks so how they are interacting with each other they are exchanging a particle with each other and that particle is called gluon is it clear so the force exists between the particles between the charges between the masses is due to the exchange of the particle and if it's a gravitational force it's a graviton if electromagnetic force then photon if it's a weak nuclear force it can be wz boson and if it's a strong nuclear force it is gluon this is how we explain that existence of the force other particles like photon bosons gluons are discovered but about the graviton still it's a theory existence of a graviton pr practically it's not proved so copy this part particle exchange model so this is a diagram which is representing the interaction of the particle like example you can see here like showing a particle interaction say two electrons are are there like charges so like charges repel each other so how they repel each other so they exchange a particle and because these particles are for interaction of electromagnetic force repulsion act, act between them so how they exchange how they apply force on each other by exchanging a particle or a boson known as photon same thing if you have electron neutrino and you you have a neutron so this electron neutrino gives electron and here basically it's it's a new it's a beta decay a negative beta decay so what happened in this negative beta decay a neutron gives proton electron and anti electron neutrino or this can also happen that neutron can interact with electron neutrino result in a formation of a proton and electron so what happen how these particles apply force so neutrino and neutron scattering so how they apply force on each other by exchanging a particle which is known as 
डब्ल्यू पॉजिटिव और वीक न्यूक्लियर पार्टिकल बोजोन सेम वे दिस इज एक्चुअली बीटा डी के वॉट हैपन अ न्यूट्रॉन ब्रेक्स इन टू प्रोटोन इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड इट दिस विल बी एंटी इलेक्ट्रॉन न्यूट्रीनो नॉट इलेक्ट्रॉन न्यूट्रीनो so that it will exchange another particle which is called boson which is w negative and two like one is up another one is down so two quarks are there which force interaction is there between them the force is known as gluon this is just an idea that you should understand like interactions and what force exists between the particles so example give similarities and difference between particle and anti particle so similarities and difference we already discuss in the beginning of this chapter that uh, similarities they will have the same mass they will have the same magnitude of the charge and differences they will have opposite charges they will have opposite spin the rest mass energy of electron is 0.5 mega electron volt a photon of energy 1.1 mega electron volt produce an electron and positron pair calculate the total kinetic energy so if there is a photon this photon produce electron which is having a mass of 5. Point, sorry 0.5 mega electron volt this is a mass rest mass and it produce a positron also with a rest mass of 0.5 mega electron and the energy of a photon was 1.1 so the question is what is the kinetic energy of electron and positron so the total energy minus the energy which is needed to produce these particle when i subtract them i will get how much is the kinetic energy so as you can see so it's 1.1 is a total energy minus the energy required to produce proton and anti proton uh, sorry electron and positron so this result in 0.1 mega electron volt then give two differences between hadron and lepton so what are the differences between hadron and lepton so you can see what are hadrons hadrons feel strong nuclear leptons do not feel and leptons are fundamental hadrons are not give two examples of baryon so proton and neutron give two differences between baryon and meson so what are the differences between baryon and meson baryon are formed by three quarks meson are formed by quark and anti quark meson have integer spins like but baryons have half spin like half uh, but they will have uh, mesons will have like example plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 or minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 then state the quark that form proton so the quark which form proton so it will be up down down sorry uh, up up and down and for neutron it is up down down for anti so anti proton it will be all the anti particle will be there it will be anti up anti up and down and for anti neutron it will be anti up anti down anti down use the conservation law to determine which interactions are possible so if we check the first interaction we have to check the charge <coughs> 
A, B and C are possible, but A is not possible. Why A is not possible? So we have proton uh, gives a neutron plus positron plus anti-electron neutrino. So first I'll check the charge. Uh, charge of proton is plus, neutron is zero, positron is plus, anti-electron neutrino, zero. So charge is conserved. Then I will check the baryon number. Baryon number for every baryon is plus one. So this is plus one. This is plus one lepton, it's baryon number zero. So baryon number is conserved. Then I'll check the lepton number. Proton is not a lepton, so that's zero. Neutron is not a lepton, zero. For every lepton, like electron, electron neutrino, tau, tau neutrino, and muon, muon neutrino, the lepton number is plus one. And for anti-lepton, it's minus one. And this is also anti-particle minus one. So you can see the anti, the lepton number is not conserved, so this interaction cannot occur or cannot happen. The remaining two, when you apply the conservation, you will find that it can happen. List four fundamental interaction in order of strength. So fundamental interactions, strong nuclear, then electromagnetic, then weak nuclear, and at the last, it is gravitational. This is the strength of the interaction. I like strong nuclear having a greater force as compared to electromagnetic. Electromagnetic higher than weak and weak will have higher than gravitational one. Then which of these four forces will the following particle feel? Neutrino. Neutrino is a Lepton, uh, so leptons, which kind of force? The lepton experience, lepton always experience weak nuclear force. So you can see weak nuclear force. Electron, electron is having a charge also and it's a lepton. So it is weak nuclear and it's also having a mass. So weak nuclear, gravitational and electromagnetic. And proton, proton is having a charge as well. Proton is having a mass as well. Proton consists of quarks and quarks can experience strong and weak nuclear both. Mostly strong nuclear, but weak nuclear is also there. So all the four forces are existing within this. Is it clear? Discussions? Yeah. So the other topic like the past paper discussion is there, but uh, first I want you to learn all these particles about the particles so that in next class, we can have or discuss the particle interactions from the past paper questions. Any question related to the class today? No. Okay.